everyone welcome back to physical education class in the previous class we discussed the history rules and regulations of volleyball in today's class we are going to discuss few more rules and regulations of volleyball in that the first we are going to discuss about the team leader In volleyball both captain as well as the coach are responsible for the entire team discipline the captain is the person who is going to sign the score sheet and represent his or her team for the toss even at the time of the game the captain will be responsible for the discipline of the entire team in the case if he is being substituted at that time he should make sure that one of the player except libro should be made as a court captain where he will be taking the entire charge of discipline of that respective team and later when he is being substituted again back to the game he will be the captain where will be taking the responsibility of the entire team discipline and code of conduct yes now you are clear with what is the roles and responsibility of a team leader and we will move on to the next point that is we score a point to win a set and to win a match so now we are going to see this three rules how it is being followed that is to score a point to win a set and to win a match in to score a point here you have to see just two criteria okay to score a point a team should successfully ground the ball into the opponent's court so automatically you are going to get a point this is the first criteria and the second thing is that if there is any fault done by the opponent team or any penalty which is being received by the opponent team automatically we are going to get a point so a team which is in an advantage place are going to get a point so this is how a point is scored in volleyball next we'll move on to set so before going to a set it would be better for you uh, to understand what is a set so set for men and women it varies actually for the men and women actually it is going to vary so here i would like to make a note here men women yes okay in volleyball for men they are going to give five sets so for how many sets it is five sets we'll make it like this sets played so five sets for women it will be three sets in the men we call it as first set second set third set fourth set and the fifth set is called as the deciding set for the women we call it as first set second set and the third set is called as the deciding set so here the first four sets that is the first four sets Two to six. So the last set is going to decide 
which team is the winner so we call it as a deciding set so as you have got an idea of this now it will be easy for you to understand to win a set it is very simple that the team which wins sorry which scores first 25 points first 25 points first 25 points have uh, decided as winner of this set here in this case there is the one to one thing which you have to keep in mind when you are scoring 25 points minimum two points lead should be there for an example to make you understand in an easier way so if there is team a and team b so each has scored 24 24 so it is become because we have already said that we have discussed that the team which is going to score 25 points of the winners but in this case if a scores 25 we are not going to decide the A team is the winner. No, because there is one criteria which should be followed is that minimum two points lead should be there to win a set. So here it is 25 and again it is a 26 and we tell that the A team is the winner. We say that the A is the winner. To win a set, the team should score first 25 points with the minimum lead of 2 points we say that a team is a winner moving on to the last point of this part is winner match already we have seen how much sets is being played for the men and the women and which is called as the deciding set here it is very simple to understand that the team that which wins that which wins the maximum number of sets so it is for the maximum number of sets. So this is the one criteria which we will be seeing here. The team that which is going to win the maximum number of sets will be decided and declared as the winner of the match. So to just summarize from this point, to score a point, successfully grounding the ball in the opponent's court and when an opponent team receives a penalty or commits any fault so you are going to score a point to win a set the team that which is going to score first 25 points with minimum lead of 2 points and moving on to win a match the team that which is going to win the maximum number of sets the maximum number of set will be declared as the winner of the match the next rule is the default and incomplete team.
structure of plate two subheading from under this one is truss and the second finger is the valve section the toss the toss is carried out by the first referee as well as the second referee where the two team captains represent themselves for the toss the person or the captain who is going to win the toss can choose either coach or either loser these are the two options which is being given to the person or a captain who has won the toss either to serve or either to choose the end or the coach the remaining choice is left for the captain who has not been successful in the toss and moving on to the warm up session each team has given 6 6 minutes for the warm up session so i'll just make it clear here so the one is toss and the other thing is warm up the other one is the warm up so now we are clear with the toss now the warm up session if the captain decide themselves and if they are okay with doing warm up with both the teams on the court at that time the 10 minutes is being given if not they want to do the warm up individually with the ball by using the net and the court each team is being given 6 minutes but if they have a good understanding and the referee can permit that the both the team want to do the warm up with the ball on the court the 10 minutes time is being given for both the team this is the structure of the play so the toss and the warm up session the next rule is the rotation order this is one system which is being followed in the volleyball game starting lineup so here if the player's name is been given 1 2 3 4 5 6 the same position should they take in the court to make it very clear so this is a volleyball court this is a center line this is an attack line we also call it as front zone and this is the player where the number 1 comes and the number two player comes in the position of from front zone and in the middle we call him as a passer where comes the third player and the fourth person comes where he is going to attack the ball and in the back zone again followed by the number that is five and here in the center comes the six this is what how the names is being listed in the starting lineup and as well as it will be mentioned in the score sheets also where one of the responsibility of the team leader to sign the score sheet this is one of the responsible of it so here this is the way the players have been ordered so how they are going to rotate this is what we are going to see now how yes always remember rotation is done clockwise the rotation is done clockwise For example, you can see the clock rotates like this. So we call it as clockwise, and we call it as anti-clockwise. So the rotation is always done clockwise. So when the rotation is done, again you should not be get confused here. When a receiving team, when a receiving team gains a point clockwise, one position rotation is being done. So for example, so they are the receiving team. The service is done from this side, and they have received and they have got a point. At this moment, they are going to rotate one position clockwise. That is, the one goes to six, and the six comes to five, and the five comes to four, four comes to three, three comes to two, and the two is the person who is going to come to position number one, and he is going to serve the. Serve for the next point. This is all about.
the rotation order which is being played in the volleyball. How it is being determined? It is being determined by the starting lineup. Here there are chances of making the faults. What are all the faults? If the player is not served according to the rotation order, it is a fault. Automatically we decide it is a fault. So when a fault is being done in the rotation order, what are the consequences which is being faced for that team? And what penalty is being given for the team? It by the first entry. Yes. So now we will just uh, mention this as an A and this is a B. So now A team has done the rotation fault. So what are the consequences which they are going to face now? First, they are going to cancel the rally. So first thing is that they are going to cancel the rally. And the second thing is that they are going to rectify the rotation order fault. Yes, they say that lane number 3 should have to serve, but lane number 5 has served. So it is a fault. They are going to rectify. And the third thing is that they are going to ready the complete point from where the fault has happened. So, for example, team A has made a rotation point from point 3 and they have gained 7 points. So, if they have rectified it, automatically all 4 points have been reduced and they will come back to 3rd point. That is only 3 points is valid for them. But for the B, the points remain valid. So, there is not going to be any changes in the points of B team because they have not done any mistake. So, only for the A team, you are going to reduce. The fourth point is that if they could not identify from where and from which point the fault has happened, in that case, only the rally will be cancelled and the opponent team will be given chance to serve and they are going to gain a point. So this is all about the rotation which is being followed in volleyball and what are the consequences which is being faced when there is some fault which is done in this rotation order. So here two things which you have to keep in mind. How the rotation is done? The rotation is done clockwise. How much position the rotation is done? The rotation is done only one position. So, the person who is coming to the position number one will be eligible to serve next. When the rotation is done, when a receiving team gains a point, only at that point the rotation is going to happen. For example, you may have a doubt here. I am going to serve, that is the A team is going to serve now and they have gained the point. They should do a rotation? No. Because I very clearly mentioned that when the rotation is done, only when the receiving team gains a point, the rotation is done in this way. And we also see what are the four consequences when the rotation fault is found. That is, there will be a loss of rank. They are going to rectify the fault and if they are rectified, the points will be reduced of the team which they have made fault and the opponent team's points remains valid. And the fourth point, if they could not find out from where the fault has happened, only that particular value has been cancelled and the service chances goes to the opponent team. This is all about the rotation and its fault. The next rule which we are going to discuss is the ball in play. Ball out of play. Ball in.
So each word may look similar for you and it may give the same meaning, but it is entirely different. Ball in play. When we discuss about the ball in play, the ball is in play when it is being served by the server after the authorization of the first referee. So when we say the ball is in play, so we say that when it is being served by the server after the permission or authorized by the first referee. So this we consider as ball in play. So the opponent team cannot come and consist themselves saying that no we were not ready. Our team members were discussing something. No. So when the ball is in play, when server serves the ball after the authorization of the first referee. When the ball is out, the ball is out when there is some fault committed by a player and immediately it is being visualed and noticed and noticed by a referee. At that time it is very clearly indicates that the ball is out of play. So the ball is in play when the server serves and when it is being authorized by this referee and the ball is out of play when there is a fault committed by the player or it has been visual by first referee or the second referee and indicates that there is ball fault or the player fault. This is the difference between the ball in play and the ball out of play. So what is this ball in and ball out? What is this ball in and ball out? Ball in, it is nothing but having contact with the court including the boundary line. At that time we call it as ball in. Including the boundary line, if the ball has touched the court, we consider as a ball in. We also call it as ball good. So we say that a side referee or line referee or the second referee automatically indicates if the ball is good by the use of the flag. So we consider this as a ball in. Then what is ball out? So what is ball out? So in this case, when we decide that ball is out, when the core of the ball completely goes outside the core or the boundary line and touches the floor and we consider that as ball out. And the second is that the ball is out when it touches an object outside the court. It may be a branch of a tree or a chair or whatever it is. When the ball touches an object outside the court, we consider that as a ball out. Third thing, if it is fails to cross the crossing space, we yesterday in the previous class, we discussed that Antenna is going to limit the crossing space. So, if the ball goes partially or away from the antenna or not in the crossing space, we consider that as a ball out. The fourth one, if the ball completely goes under the net, at that time also we consider the ball is out. So, these are the four points which we have to keep when we consider the ball is out. So we, when we say the ball is out, when the ball touches the floor completely outside the boundary line, the second thing when it touches an object outside the court, and the third thing if it is partially or fail to go between the crossing space, and the fourth one is completely if the ball go under the net, that is beneath the net if it goes, we consider it as a ball out. Just to make it very clear for you students, what is ball in play? Ball is in play when it is being authorized by the first referee and the server serves the ball. So we immediately consider that point of time that ball is in play. What is ball out of play? We consider the ball is out of play when a fault is committed and it is being indicated and a visual signal is being given by any of the referee at that time we consider this ball is out of play. When we consider this ball in, when the whole of the ball contacts or touch the court including the boundary line, 
we consider this ball in and what is ball out when the come hold of the ball touches the floor outside the boundary line it is out second thing when it touches the objects outside the court we consider it as an out and the third thing when it goes under the net that is beneath the net we consider it as ball out and the fourth point is that if the ball fails to cross the crossing space that is between the antenna immediately we consider that as ball out okay students we are at the end of today's session and we will just summarize what all the rules and regulations in the major game of volleyball discussed today the first point which we discussed was the team leader what is his roles and responsibilities and the second thing to score a point to win a set and to win a match and the third point comes a default and an incomplete team how we consider the team is default and incomplete and the fourth comes the structure of play the two points again we discussed in that one is the toss because who's going to represent for toss and what choice they get if they win the toss and the second was warm up session how many minutes each team can take to do the warm up then moving further we saw what is the rotation and and its spot that is the major system which is being followed in the volleyball and the last comes we saw is that the ball in play the ball out of play the ball in and the ball out this is all about the today's class thank you so much and we will meet you in the next class thank you